Hello, everybody. On to factoring using the pattern x squared plus bx plus c, where c is greater than zero. So that means c is going to be a positive number. Well, I have a set of binomials, x plus 3 times the quantity of x plus 5. And if I FOIL this, I am going to get x squared plus 8x plus 15. What do you notice, if anything? Is there a relationship between my integers in my binomial factors and my linear term and my constant? Does anybody see any connection there? I'm going to give you a minute to think. Well, not a minute. Seconds. Okay. Hopefully you saw that the constants in my binomials, 3 and 5, add up to be the coefficient of the linear term. What can you tell me about the constant in my trinomial? That's right. It is the product of the 3 times 5. Let's go ahead and FOIL the second example. I have the quantity of x minus 6 times the quantity of x minus 4. If I FOIL, first is x squared, outer, inner, negative 10x, last product, positive 24. Does anybody see a pattern there? Well, you should have noticed that my linear term is, again, the sum of negative 6 plus negative 4, and the constant is the product of negative 6 times negative 4. So if we can come up with a pattern, what we are to look for, then we can come up with a rule to factor a trinomial that looks like x squared plus bx plus c, where c is greater than 0. So to factor a trinomial with a quadratic coefficient of 1 and whose constant is positive, we are going to do the following. The first thing we do want to do is we want to eliminate or see first if there is a greatest monomial factor that I can factor out. I also want to see if it's any pattern. Now, if it's a trinomial, it is not going to be the difference of two squares. But if it's a binomial, it will be. I'm going to test that pattern, and I'm going to test a perfect square trinomial pattern out to see if maybe I can factor the trinomial using that pattern. Now, if all of that is taken care of, I'm going to go to the first thing, which is I'm going to list all of the factors of the constant, every pair. Once I have all of those pairs listed, step two is I'm going to look at which pair equals the sum that will be the coefficient of the middle term. So we call that a factor sum table. Example one, let's factor y squared plus 14y plus 40. We want to make sure that our trinomial is in standard form, which it is. And then we're going to go through our checklist of what we've already learned. So is there a greatest monomial factor? I don't have an integer GCF. Not all of my terms have Y. So there is no greatest monomial factor. Let's check if it's a difference of two squares. Well, it's not a binomial, so it's not going to be that. Let's check to see if it's a perfect square trinomial. y squared is a perfect square, but 40 is not. So there is no perfect square trinomial, which means what I'm going to make is I'm going to make something called a factor sum table. Let's go ahead and list the factors of 40. It's really good to be organized so you don't miss any. One times 40 would be 40. Now, if I added those together, I would get 1 plus 40, or 41. 2 times 20 is 40. If I add them together, 2 plus 20 equals 22. 4 is another factor of 40. That would be 40 times 10. So 4 plus 10 is equal to 14. 5 times 8 is also equal to 40, and 5 plus 8 
is equal to 13. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the sum and we're going to look at the coefficient of the linear term. The coefficient of the linear term is 14. Do you see any factors of 40 that add up to be 14? And if you notice in our factor and sum chart or table, the factors of 4 times 10 add up to be 14. So now I can go ahead and set up my binomial factors. I'm going to create two binomials. Okay, I have my two binomial factors set up. Now let's look at the first term, which is y squared. y can only factor one way. y times y would be y squared. Now we know the factors of 40 that add up to 14, so I'm going to put those in my binomial. 4 in one, 10 in the other. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide on my operation or my signs. All of my terms in my trinomial are positive, so a positive 4 times a positive 10 is going to equal 40. Now I'm going to FOIL to check. First, y squared. Outer, positive 10 times y, 10y. Inner, positive 4 times y, positive 4y. Last, positive 4 times 10, positive 40. Combine my like terms, y squared plus 14y plus 40, and it checks. So my solution or my factors of y squared plus 14y plus 40 is equal to y plus 4 times the quantity of y plus 10. Example 2, let's factor y squared minus 11y plus 18z squared. Is that in standard form? This should be yz here. The answer is yes. Now let's check our patterns. Is there a greatest monomial factor? No, there are no numbers that are shared. There are no variables that are shared with every term. Not a difference of two squares because it's not a binomial. 18 is not a perfect square, so it's not a perfect square trinomial. C is greater than zero, so I'm going to create a factor sum chart. Now, what number am I going to take the factors of? And the answer is the 18, that last term. So let's go ahead and list the factors of 18. 1 times 18. If I add them together, I get 19. 2 times 9. If I add them together, I get 11. 3 times 6. If I add them together, I get 9. Did I find a pair of factors of 18 that equals the coefficient of the linear term? And the answer is yes, right here. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 plus 9 is 11. So now I can start my binomials. The first thing we're going to put in the binomials are our variables. y squared only factors one way, y times y. Notice there is a variable on our last term. I like to put that in when I'm putting the variables in so you don't forget them. So I have my y and my z and my y and my z. Now I can go ahead and put in my numbers. 2z, 9z. Now it doesn't matter if I put the 9 first or the 2 first because in this case the operations are going to be the same. Notice in front of the middle term there is a minus sign. This is actually negative 11. So the sum has to be negative, which means both the 2 needs to be negative and the 9 needs to be negative. They have to be the same sign because the 18 is positive. FOIL to check first. y squared. Outer, negative 9yz. Inner, negative 2yz. 
And last, a negative times a negative is a positive, positive 18z squared. Combine like terms, so y squared minus 11yz plus 18z squared, and it checks. Example three, let's factor x squared minus 10x plus 14. So again, we find the factors of the constant. So factors of 14, 1 times 14, the sum is 15. 2 times 7, the sum is 9. Are there any other factors? No, there are not. Do any of the sums equal 10? They do not. So this cannot be factored, which means this is a prime polynomial, and it cannot be factored. So we will leave this the way it is. Example four, a farmer plants a rectangular pumpkin patch, that's what's in orange, that has an area of 600 meters squared. What is the area of the square plot of land? So we want to find the area of the whole piece of land. We have the area of the pumpkin patch, but we need to find the dimensions of that pumpkin patch. So if the whole side of that square plot is S, then my length is going to be the S minus the 30. That's going to be the length of the rectangle. The width of the rectangle pumpkin patch is going to be S minus 40. So now I have the dimensions of the pumpkin patch and I know what the total area is. So area is equal to length times width. The area is 600 meters and the dimensions length is S minus 30 and the width is S minus 40. 40. So I now have an equation that I can work through in order to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and FOIL. First, S squared, outer negative 40S, inner negative 30S, last positive 1,200. Combine like terms, 600 is equal to S squared minus 70S plus 1,200. We want to set this equation equal to zero, so we're going to go ahead and subtract the 600 from both sides in order to put this in standard form. 600 minus 600 is zero is equal to S squared minus 70S plus 600. I have a positive constant. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a factor sum chart, but there are too many factors of 600. So I'm going to ask myself a question. And the question is, what factors of 600 add up to be 70? And I think about it, and 10 times 60 would be 600, and 10 plus 60 is going to be 70. So I now have my factors so I can factor this trinomial. Let's create our two binomials. S squared only factors S times S. We decided that the factors were going to be 10 and 60. 70 is negative, so both parentheses has to have negative signs. Now, in order to solve, we're going to set the factors equal to 0 and solve. So we have S minus 10 equals 0, S minus 60 equals 0. Add 10 to both sides, and S is equal to 10 meters. Add 60 to both sides, and S is equal to 60 meters. Are both of the answers reasonable? Well, 10 is not reasonable. Because if you look at our drawing, each side has a 40 meter or a 30 meter, meter length or width subtracted from it. So how could that side be 10 meters? And the answer is it couldn't be. Let's get back to the original question. The original question is, what is the area of the whole plot? So area is equal to side squared because it's told us it was a square. So area is equal to 60 squared 
So the area of the whole square plot is 3,600 meters squared.